Okay. So you do so, for a property or a company, right? I do, yes. Okay, I've got okay. that in the right spot. So um, this, I'm going to go back over what I just said to you. We're editing right now Tequila Sunrise that's dated back on March 15th. Um, what I'm going to show with you is that this is how the image will arrive to you starting off in the folder where I've already merged the files and done the um, color correction to it. So with okay. this, there's still going to be some steps that are going to be necessary. So I'm going to go into the develop module out of library in Lightroom. From here, you'll see over on the right side of what adjustments I've already made. But I think because of how you're going to receive it, those will all be dead center because it's going to be a JPEG rather than a raw file. So if you go down to what's called transform, from here you're going to be able to straighten out the lines on the side of the image because right now they're, they're bent because I've positioned the camera down so you don't see all of the ceiling. A lot of times you can just hit the auto button and when doing that it'll do its best to straighten out the lines as best as possible. Sometimes you'll have to adjust a little bit within. There's the vertical, horizontal, rotate, aspect, scale, all of that. Um, but a lot of times auto is going to do it perfectly right for you. Um, so then from here, what I try to do is to even out the color. Because right now, down the center of the screen, to the left is more blue, and to the right is more orange. So on your keyboard, you can hit the letter K, and it's going to bring up a local adjustment tool brush. And how I have mine set, um, you can actually customize it to where you have two different brushes. Um, on my A setting right now, I've got the feather all the way to the right. So what that's going to do is whenever I paint, which I'll show you an example real quick with the exposure all the way down, it'll allow it to feather out. So wherever I put this, you'll see the black start to form. Yeah. Obviously, okay. it's going to be different than that. I'm going to want to add light or try to get rid of some shadows or adjust the color. So um, whenever it gets further away from the center of the circle, it's going to feather itself out to make it to where it blends a lot better, um, which makes everything much, much easier. Now, just like how it is in um, Photoshop, you know, everything's a circle. So if you need yeah, well, to... Yeah, when you have something that's like radiating out, you have to fix, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't do a smooth transition, yeah. so then you have to get feeling brush tool and, and blend it, yeah. you know, so... So that with that... You don't have to do this, that's cool! Yeah, and what's great about it too, and I'm going to have to show you here in a minute whenever I do my windows, um, since it's a circle, you can then, there's an eraser section as well. So I'll show that to you here in just a minute. What I'm going to do is go ahead and even out this picture. Like I feel like I need a little bit of light here on the side of this couch. Um, and then I'm going to bring my brush down to a little smaller and do a little bit around the coffee table area and just brighten it up. Now over here on this far right hand side, it's overexposed. So that's that other room. So I'm going to hit new and go to a new um, brush. I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit and then highlights down and then I'm going to bring this whole room to where you can see into it better. Now it doesn't go a whole lot of a way but it really does make a huge difference in the photo whenever you see it from before and after. Um, I'm going to create a whole new brush again and that because this right side of the picture itself is a lot more orange. So I'm going to get my brush really big and then I'm going to come over to the temperature scale and just bring it down on the blues a little bit. And then I'm going to brush over this whole side. And then from here, it's not enough, so I just go back over to it and keep pulling it down until I feel that it's right. And then now I've got a pretty evenly covered picture. So from this image, I would say it's done. So I hit K to get rid of the brush, and then I just move on to the next picture. So with this okay. one, again, you're going to want to come down here to transform. Once this computer loads, hit the auto button and see if it gets your line straight. Which, what lines are you talking about? I, I, mean, I don't even see any lines. Right here on the side. When I look at the walls, oh, how they're oh, bent. Okay. So it's when I hit nice. that, now it straightens it back out. So that, that way it looks like an actual picture of how it should be. Um, yeah, I 
from you. Yeah. But, you know? Yeah, okay. So now with this picture, uh, you'll notice this window is super blown out right back over here. So what I'm going to do with that is go to that brush tool again, and instead of using my A brush, which has the big feather on it, I'm going to use my B brush, which has no feather. Um, and what's cool about this, and I'll go ahead and show you, there is what's called auto mask. And what that's going to okay. do is actually help your lines get perfectly straight at a fast tempo. Okay. Now, whenever I do a lot of commercial work, I don't use that. And I'll show you an example right now because you can notice a difference if you do have to blow up the image really big. So I'm going to bring this exposure down a lot. And I'm going to go ahead and paint in these lines. Okay. But at the same time, too, remember I've got that recording that you'll be able to see it really well on in a minute. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and brush over this entire picture, or not picture, the, the window. And there's a building just to the other side of this. That's why you can only see those leaves right now. Where if that was the beach, you would see the sky, the blue, and all of that. Um, and then what I end up doing is when you hit spacebar on your computer and then click in that area, it's going to zoom really close into that section. And so if you remember how I said to you earlier on how this is a circle and you know you can't obviously go to a square with a circle. So you're going to have to go back over and delete out the sections that are obviously that black that's right here. I'll show you a little, a little bigger. Um, so if you hit the Alt key, what that's going to do, or Option, Alt, Option, same thing, um, it's going to bring up the eraser, which you can also feather on as well. But So what I'm going to do now is go back over this dark section and delete out right up to that edge of the window and get it as straight as I possibly can to erase out that darkness that's part of the picture that I don't need. Now once again you can use that auto mask section and what that's going to do is give you a straight line with being able to go fast. And so that way your line doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, it's going to do the computer work for you to make it as best as possible. So and as I you can see similar like that in Photoshop with the auto selection tool. Exactly. It's like the same exact thing. Um, that's what I thought. That's so then I'm able to go over this really quick, but as you can see, see how choppy it is? And that little section that I just went yeah. over. So that's why I don't yeah. like to use auto mask, and I would actually get my tool the proper size and go over it to where it's refined a lot better. Because if someone happens to be looking at this on a massive monitor, they're going to see that and it's going to look like garbage. But so then that's done for that window for the most part. Now I wish. What's up? Sometimes when you're enhancing a view, you have the balcony railing that is another, you know, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. And there's a lot of really good part, parts of the view through the railings, but you don't want to be doing the change to the railing. You know what I mean? Now, yeah, I know what you mean. And there is ways of doing that. Um, it's tough, but... Uh, you know, it's one of those things you almost have to go over each individual part, which I hate doing. Um, that's why if you use just the highlight section instead of the actual exposure, with that, it's not going to be as invasive as what exposure would do. So th there is ways around it. It's just, it's one of those things. That's why you have to get it right the first time with taking the photo. So right now I'm going back over the image and the parts that are orange and I'm trying to lighten them up to where it'd be even with the remainder of the image to get it a little bit more blue. So I'm just dragging that temperature scale back over with a local adjustment tool brush and seeing if I can get this to, to match as even as possible. Wall like blue in that house? They were, yeah. So another thing that I'm going to show you, why is this? Oh, my density's down, that's why. There we go. I'm gonna show you also a little cheat sheet. 
because sometimes depending on what time of day I'm shooting there's it's impossible to get rid of the blue it's going to be there no matter what um, there is actually a tool in Lightroom which is very similar to Photoshop too that you can go and um, eliminate a certain color or lighten that certain color up so I'll show you as soon as I'm done with this brush stroke. I just have to do it with you, and you can take out the, um, you know, take out the color. Exactly. You. So you see here where there's HSL, color, B, and W. That is where I would go in and select this, and on HSL under luminous, you can drag that blue and eliminate the blue coloring and tint within the photo itself which a lot of times you'll get a sheen on a floor or um, something in the glass. And if you pull that just a little bit, it starts to eliminate it and turn it to white, which it, it's just a blessing of a tool. It's so much easier to use than anything else. So now I would move on to the next image. And again, I've got windows over here. And like on this property in particular, I probably wouldn't even mess with these windows. You can see enough through them to where it's not bad but there's cars out here. So if I go through and lighten these up even more to where we can see more through them, all you're gonna see is vehicles, which who wants to see that? You know what I mean? Exactly. So exactly. on this, oh, oops, what did I do here? There we go, okay. So what I would do just on this photo is just focus on the image itself inside and try to steer people's eyes away from these windows. Um, but what I'm going to do to keep this video short is to move on to something that is a lot different of a photo, like for instance on this. Just for my curiosity, how would you, you just like blur them or the window with a photo with the bars in it? How would you get it where they're not that visible? Well, like with this, on this image right here, so this is showing outside of the balcony on the second floor. There's a building there and then there's you know cars there. So what I would do simply is once I'm done correcting the image itself, I'm gonna not even try to focus on that because you're gonna be so focused on everything else in the image, there's no point to even put a Gaussian blur on it or, or anything like that. I would just leave it be and then their eye is not gonna be focused on it. So, but like on this image here, we essentially have three rooms. We have this main gathering area up top we have a bedroom here and then a bathroom here. They're all different exposures, different temperatures, everything. So once I get the, the room straight with fixing the walls, which I always do first, then I'm gonna go back through and adjust this room, then this room, and then this room as a whole. So that's why this tool comes so much in handy with this brush because especially with that feathering. They used to not have the feathering tool and God, it's changed everything now that they've brought that into, into B. So now I just fix that bathroom to where it matches with this. And then now I need to come through this, this main room. I'm gonna warm it up a little bit and get it to where it's similar with the remainder of the rooms. It's too bright. So I'm gonna bring it down. And then now, since they're all equal, what I'm gonna do is put my temperature brush back to zero, and then I'm gonna just bring up my exposure a little bit with this brush so that I can go through and hit certain areas. Like you notice this corner is super dark. So I'm gonna try and lighten it up to match a lot more of the remainder of the room, but by not making it look fake. Cause you know, everything- Oh my God, you make a with that. Oh yeah, it's crazy. And see how just by me drawing down this line here, we're gonna bring it up yeah. a little bit more. Wow. That shadow almost disappears, you know? Wow. And then you can even go back over it once you've gotten that one section, hit that one one more time. Now that's gone. So I'm and gonna work. Well, on the right, what is this? It's just a certain brush, and you're doing. What, what you have as the options up here is the far left is your crop tool. This one okay. is a spot correction. So say if there's like image dust that's on the, the sensor and you have like a black dot in the middle of the screen, you click that and you can adjust the size of the circle. Then you have the red eye tool, which I, I never use. 
This one okay. comes in handy when you're doing landscapes. It, it sent, oh, I'll just show it to you. Real quick. So on, it's the, the tall rectangle. If you click on it, and then let's just bring this exposure way down so I can show you what it's going to do. You I'll make a couple tutorials and figure out Lightroom. I mean, I think I'll pick, pick it up fast just because it sounds like it does every, everything better, but like similar to Photoshop. It does, yeah. So and it's just quicker, easier, faster. Yeah. So with this one, like say for instance, if we have a beachscape in front of us and I want to show off a super blue sky, I would take this and it comes as a little uh, plus sign and you start at the top and then you just drag down and then what it's going to do yeah. is you'll see now how the whole top of the screen is black which of course I can also bring the exposure up or I can bring it down same with the highlights and just change the whole top section of an image or whatever is above that line and it does a nice even fade so it's perfect for like sunsets and that's on that, that rectangle one then you have uh, what is this tool that's almost like a great unmask with a clear going to clear. Yep. Yeah. You know? And then the one on the far right is pretty much the only one I use, which is that local adjustment tool brush, which you'll see over here on the right. Sorry, I just uh -huh. bumped the camera. You have size, feather, flow, and density. And then you have the okay. A brush and B brush. So the A brush I put to where it's got a really big feather with density and flow all the way up, unless I need to adjust that a little bit better. And then B being my just regular zero brush that has um, no feather on it for whenever I do my windows. So I'm going to move on to another image real quick because I don't know how much time I've done on this video. Let's see. Yeah, I've got three minutes left on this video before I have to start another clip. So let me get to like this one real quick. So washer and dryers, you're always going to have a tripod. Uh, leg in it. You're always going to have possibly my face in it up here. I'll show you a quick um, tool that I found in Photoshop that works great. So let me do this real quick. I'm going to stop recording on the camera. All right, where's the okay. button?